Hi, welcome back to SQL Server 2016 Administration. I'm Steve Jones, and this is the section on extended events. In this section, we'll start with an introduction to extended events, which will be in the next video. We'll then move into some details on extended events. So the introduction is kind of a general overview, but we'll take some details and look at what sessions are and how templates can help you set up these sessions. We'll talk about the different types of targets and their various uses and how you might want to choose one over the other. We'll then look at the options that are available to extended event sessions so that you understand the implications of making different choices. And finally, we'll finish by looking at and analyzing the data. This is the extended events section, and this video is the introduction to extended events. In this video will cover a description of what extended events are and the architecture. We'll talk about how extended events do differ from trace, and then we'll look at the default extended event sessions. Extended events are a way of getting information about SQL Server, in essence, monitoring what's going on in a platform. Now, this is a very lightweight, scalable way of gathering these different metrics. It was designed to be an architecture that's extensible, but also very, very lightweight. And it is designed to replace the SQL trace slash profiler system that existed in previous versions. This still exists in SQL Server 2016, but it's been deprecated. Now, as we said, it's lightweight. That means that very few resources are needed to gather data, which reduces the impact on your SQL Server. Talking about profiler was a little bit heavier weight. And then this system that was introduced into SQL Server 2008, it's been enhanced and enhanced quite a bit through the versions. And it's a fairly mature framework now in SQL Server 2016. This does replace trace. And many people are used to not so much trace, but the profiler GUI. A lot of reasons why extended events was chosen over trace. The biggest one was that the trace system had a little more overhead and the profile of GUI tool was resource intensive, had a lot more overhead. It was actually recommended that you not run this tool on any servers. Trace was also a less extensible architecture. And we'll talk about a little bit of the architecture of extended events as we go through this section, but trace was somewhat limited and wasn't easy to have it grow to meet the needs of the future. One of the other advantages that extended events has is that our data can go to multiple targets or multiple destinations, which wasn't the case with trace. We typically had to send all the trace to either a file or a table and then maneuver the data around with our own ETL type process. Extended events is much better in this way. Now, because of the introduction of extended events and the light way in which it works, trace has not been enhanced. So since 2008, it hasn't been changed or had any work done on it. So essentially, since the last eight or nine years now, we've had the same subsystem in place. And also many of the new features and functions in SQL Server that need data gathered about them are not in trace. After 2012, no changes were added. At that point, extended events achieved parity with trace and all the work that has been done is to extended events. There are some disadvantages though. Profiler and trace were fairly intuitive. Trace not so much, but profiler made it very easy for most people to get up and running. And Extended events, the nomenclature and the, the tooling is a little bit cumbersome, less easy to get set up. We'll see that as we go along. Certainly in the GUI area, it's gotten better through the different versions, but it still is less easy to use, certainly in the profile. The other thing is that real-time access data is less easy. Part of this is the nature of trying to keep the resource usage down, but that's one of those issues. And lastly, extended events decided to turn all their information in XML, which is kind of complex to query. Most database people don't like it. I think if extended events were being implemented today, it would be JSON. We would have similar issues. Now, extended events configurations are really called sessions, and that's how they appear in Management Studio. These are roughly equivalent to a trace. It's a bucket of all these different features. There are two main default sessions that are running all the time. There's a system health session and always on health session. The always on one isn't enabled unless you have the always on system set up. There's a telemetry one as well, but it's less used. Now, these are created by default during installation. They're enabled on instant startup, so they're always running, but you can change these if you like. To give a little more overview, package is a container for extended event objects. So uh, we will kind of configure packages. Targets are the places where the data is sent. So that's the destinations. The sessions are really the core object that contain everything. They gather the data from the events and they send it to the targets. Actions contain are the data, which is a very strange word in my mind, but uh, when you see an extended event action, that's actually the data that's being pulled in there. And then the last thing is to be aware that these sessions kind of can persist on the server like a first class server object. So they can be started and stopped, but they just always exist on the instance. So unlike trace where you're constantly sometimes trying to reset those up, these always exist. One other 
advantage of extended events is there's causality tracking and it allows different events to be correlated together so you can kind of track the work of what a process is going on and it enables you to better troubleshoot what's going on. It's not easy. We used to do this by hand with trace data. Causality tracking makes it easier, but it still requires some practice to understand and you get used to it. Let's now take a look at the fault sessions and we'll look at Management Studio. Here I am connected to my instance. Now I've got the instance I've been working on. It's got my packed database in there. I've got this management folder and then under there is an extended events. So extended events is one of those new areas. And under there we have their sessions. Now our sessions would be the various ones that we can work with. And you'll see I've got the always on health, the system health, and the telemetry X event. These are the sessions that are created by default. And you'll notice under these I have some items. These are my targets. So my always on health session always writes to a file. My system health actually writes to the ring buffer and to a file. Let's take a look at what's inside this very briefly. Now we'll go into more detail on this kind of GUI wizard so we understand what's going on. But my session is essentially a bucket, as we said, that holds everything. So I give it a name, decide whether it's going to start up and watch live data if I want to do that. The events are where the various items are taking place. So if I make this a little larger, it's a little easier to see that there are all these different events that are occurring. So there's always on, there's cache lookups, there's service broker items. Of course, then our SQL items in, are existed in here as well, but I've got things like database created or detached, database recovery, all these different items that are chosen. Now, by default, the system health gets a certain number of things. It gets looks for errors, if processes are killed, that kind of thing, wait info. These are the events that are being captured right now, and you can see as I go through here, I can see a little information about each one of these. These are kind of an overall system health look, and you'll notice at the top there's this configure dialog that I select, and what it really does is move this GUI sideways so that here are the events selected, and I get more information about them. For example, for wait info, the event fields are the default information that's being collected. So we get the duration, the code, the signal, the weight resource, the weight type. These are things being collected. I can add additional items in here, and you can see in this case, current call stack is being collected, the session ID of the SQL text is being collected. I could certainly add other items in here. And then there's predicate. So if you look here, if I make this a little larger, that for weight info, we are looking for a weight type for the latches and if I scroll down, less than equals some value, All right? So I want these values, right? Greater than, I've got ands and ors in here. You can see that the filtering can be a little bit complex. We won't go into detail on all these, but you'll notice that these are different for different events that we're capturing. The data storage is my, giving my targets is either the place where I'm sending it. So I'm sending it to a file and then the ring buffer here as well, which is an in-memory target. And then on the advanced side, because this is uh, pre-set up, I'm not changing any of this information, but I have the ability to talk a little bit about retention and latency and those kinds. Of That's kind of the session that I want. If I want to see the data, you'll see that I can watch the live data here if I want. I can stop the session. And then if I look at each target, you can see I can look at the target data. Now this is, the file is a little bit large on this instance. I don't want to open it. But if I go to the ring buffer, you can see that it will pop open some information and it'll say, hey, it's not going to be refreshed automatically. Look at the data. If I want to look at it, you'll see that I've got a bunch of events in the ring buffer, but there is XML. Not the easiest thing to work with. Now I'm using Management Studio 17.3. It's the latest version released in September of 2017. This is decoupled from SQL Server, so you can download it and run it with any version of SQL Server. In this version, it actually includes this little XE profiler item as well, which was added just recently to allow us to make better use of extended events. And you can see there's two sessions right here. So I can start a session, launch it essentially, and it creates this extended event session that I can watch. So I'm going to launch this and then I'm going to kick off a little load on the system I've got. So it's going to generate some load against the server, just running queries over and over and over again. And what I'm doing is when I'm looking at this, I'm seeing kind of a list of information. You can see it comes in a table, got a bunch of data coming through here. It's all very similar because I'm doing a login, setting my statistics IO, I'm running a query, I'm doing a reset and I'm logging out. And that's essentially what's happening over and over and over again. 
And you can see as I go through here, I see various information down here at the bottom. This is the fields that are being captured in this particular session. So I can understand what's going on. So if I want to see what information is actually run here, I can see the SQL in here. This makes things a little bit easier if I'm trying to just capture what's going on. Certainly there's more details of what's going on. I can stop this session now. But this makes it a little bit easier so that this feels more like a profiler rather than a cumbersome tool where I'm trying to dig into, you know, these information in here and then recode it. Hopefully this gives you an idea of where extended events are. And now let's move forward.